Before I start with my irritating role of academic saying that we need more evidence, <laughs> I, I mean, as director of the Center of Global NCDs, I also want to take the opportunity to welcome everyone. And I think, I mean, the spirit of this meeting is we, I mean, there are a lot of relationship between the different agencies. We want to strengthen those relationships, but also foster new ones and, and find solutions, but also find uh, which are the gaps in terms of research. And so we have this, um, this if you want, double agenda and, and, and part of the complexity and the tension from researchers and, 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 and agencies working. But I think we need this space for discussion and, and, and find solutions and, and questions we need to work on. So. What I'm going to be presenting also is for setting the scene of some of uh, the programs that are going to be presenting um, later in this session. And it's about a systematic review that we are conducting with people from the school and, and UNH and people like uh, Martin McKee, who is chairing this session. Um, and for that, I just want to start covering briefly what is integration um, the rationale for integration of HIV and NCDs and, and present some uh, uh, preliminary results. So. You might be familiar with the building blocks from WHO, uh, from service delivery, health workforce, information, uh, medical product financing, and leadership and governance. And integration could be many things, and it's not my, my, my objective to, to go into that, but uh, it could be basically across uh, related conditions, so this is programs. It could be within a building block. It could be across one or more building blocks. Uh, it could be between public health programs like promotion, health promotion, and uh, management, or it could be uh, across activities in health system and other sectors like transport, or I mean things, if we think about obesity, definitely we need to think about other sectors. We, we, we use this definition, and you can, I mean, as I said, you can have a whole symposium on integration probably, but we use this definition for our systematic review. So managerial operational changes to health system to bring together inputs, delivery management, and organization of particular service function as a means of improving access, acceptability, quality, coverage, and cost effectiveness. And we particularly fo focus on service delivery for diseases that are um, usually delivered separately but often affect the same type of end users. So this is the cartoon that Philippa was not allowed to show <laughs> uh, and is from uh, someone from MSF Switzerland, Dilo. Uh, and I think you can all read it. Uh, uh, and so you know better than I do, I mean, the need of integration. And, and I think that's some, it's, it's, it's common sense, but it's, it's really much better explained by, by this cartoon. So we know about the double burden of disease, and we talk about this uh, in particular in Sub-Saharan Africa. The, the biological interaction between HIV and NCDs, I will not get into that, but in particular there is some evidence about increased risk on cardiovascular disease and also cancer and HIV. We know and that there's strong vertical HIV programs and a weak fragmented for NCD. And I agree that, I mean, w our entry point is NCD, but maybe covering some of the things that Taman was mentioning, we should be thinking about health in general, but uh, NCDs cover uh, many of, 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 of diseases and, and the commonalities and potentials to leverage from HIV systems. And this shows years uh, lived uh, with disability. This is data from uh, the Institute of Health Metrics, uh, University of Washington, and you can see this is from Sub-Saharan Africa. So you can see already uh, in terms of years uh, lived with disability, I mean, the, the huge burden. But again, going back to Dave's uh, comment, I mean, most of this data probably is, is, is made up to be, to be, we don't have much data, uh, uh, and I don't know, Dave can, can again, can do a whole symposium about uh, the whole modeling that we have on, on GBD, but uh, there is some evidence that it is a problem. Uh, and this is data from the same source from um, uh, the IHME, uh, there is a uh, Development assistant uh, for health. So these are uh, millions of dollars, and in blue you can see HIV. Uh, this is Sub-Saharan Africa again. So most of the development money is going for HIV and uh, maternal health and, and ma malaria. NCD is quite flat. So it makes sense. I mean, this is a rational for integration, but but also I think we need to be careful. This is a, a nice example from people from the school uh, that Catholic Church uh, led on exploring the integration between um, HIV and reproduc reproductive health in Swaziland. And she looked at four type of models from less integrated to more integrated. Actually, what they found is that they didn't, they didn't find an impact on, on health outcomes. And actually, there was a decrease on some of the 
uh, outcome for HIV. So there was less use of, I think, uh, recommendation for use of condoms. And uh, what they found actually that they were not so integrated and, and, and they show with some uh, simple method the importance of evaluating uh, integration that it did not always work. So with that in mind, we said, okay, we're gonna do a systematic review of integration. And we, our objective was to describe different models of integration and to identify barriers and facilitators at the level of the health, uh, the health system that can influence the, the success of integration. So we look at HIV and any NCD um, uh, chronic condition. We include quantitative, qualitative, or mixed method studies that they were either descriptive or evaluative, but we didn't include editorials or, or review, just uh, should be primary research. We, f we were, I mean, we found more studies than in the previous one that, that make us um, uh, to be, I mean, to, to, to do more work, and, and it, it, that's why it's taking us longer, 155 studies. And this, this, uh, this slide shows on the, on the back the prevalence of HIV and the, where the, the studies um, came from. So you can see most of them came from North America, uh, a third from, from Africa, followed by Europe, and then Asia, and only 1% in, in Latin America and Australia. These were the main conditions uh, that uh, were reported in the papers. Mental health, substance use uh, disorders, uh, cervix cancer, cardiovascular disease, and others. I'm gonna just concentrate the, the a, a portfolio of, of, of systematic reviews that we are producing in the different topics. One that is um, uh, led by Dina Balabanova, that is the overall review, and then by, by topic. The one I'm involved uh, is more on cardiovascular disease, and that's the one I'm, I'm presenting here. The, the, as I said, the preliminary result, there were 17 studies in 14 reports, but only six were full papers, what made everything much more difficult to, um, to analyze. The most common uh, uh, integration was HIV, diabetes, and hypertension. Most of the studies were descriptive. They were just talking about the program and what they've done in a descriptive way. Uh, the reporting, as I said, because we only found uh, six full papers, uh, was incomplete. Most of the follow-up was short, and, and all they measured were more uh, uh, process outcomes or proxy outcomes, uh, uh, blood pressure, for example. These were, we, tr we, we tried to summarize the different models and, 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 and the level of uh, patient entry point, uh, and, and this reflects that. So uh, community and mobile, and this shows from less intense to more intense in terms of treatment. So these are mainly screening and these are, I mean, they go treatment and referral. Community and mobile, HIV clinic, primary healthcare and secondary healthcare. And you can see the distribution of these studies. Unlike the, the overall review, most of the studies uh, for cardiovascular disease were in Sub-Saharan Africa. Most of them were add-on to existing HIV services. That's how they were um, designed. As I mentioned before, they were descriptive. Uh, they, they were not evaluative. Um, they used proxy and process outcomes, and, and, the, and the reporting was really poor in terms of, I mean, it was very difficult even to assess what was the, the risk of bias. On, on the right, I want just, we, we want in this paper to, to have some, uh, at least some, some, some conclusions and lessons from these papers, and uh, these are things that came across those papers. They, they I mean, the, the obvious uh, benefits of uh, integration, uh, and some suggested that it's feasible, acceptable, and with potential impact. To be honest, I mean, the, 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 um, the strength of the evidence is, uh, is I mean, is, is, is not much, uh, but the, uh, of course, and there's a huge potential of reporting bias. I mean, of course, uh, they are doing these programs and they just report the things that work. Um, and these were some of the challenges, the importance of uh, uh, training and protocols, uh, the competing demand for primary care providers, and um, I mean the importance of clear linkage. But of course, this still, I mean, if you think about HIV and cardiovascular disease, leaves other chronic conditions uh, outside uh, the integration. So I'll start with the research recommendations. I will finish with some practical ones. Uh, so what are, what, what are the, the research, uh, I think, ans I mean, finding the right questions for integration is, is key. Uh, and I think some of them are, what are the different models? I mean, what is their impact? Uh, what are the components that work? And importantly, that those that do not work, uh, in, which con in which context? I mean, how the context um, affect this? And how can promising integration strategies be adapted and scaled up? 
And, and this is below is the definition of what is implementation research. And I think that's the kind of research that we need for integration. So understand not only what is and isn't working, but how and why integration is going right or wrong and testing approaches to improve it. And we need to do high quality research in this, in this context. And I think we're gonna touch on this later this afternoon. This is not about, okay, we, we need to do, I mean, I've done randomized control trials, but I'm not saying we need to do randomized control trials about everything. We need to do the best design that we can do in that setting and minimize bias as much as we can as, as they did in the, in, the, in the paper that I, I presented from Catherine Church. We need to use mixed methods. I mean, the qualitative research is important beyond the quantitative to understand some of the findings. Uh, we need to do, I mean, large studies, and, and again, this comes to some of the data, uh, some of the discussion we had before about the need of data, process evaluation, and clearly better reporting. Uh, otherwise, it's better difficult to, to, to get lessons and, and scale them up. But this is something that we, we came in, in, the, in the main paper uh, that, as I mentioned, Bina is, is leading, uh, and it has some kind of cross-cutting uh, themes that we think could be useful when you think about integration. The first one is, about effective leadership uh, and management. And this is so, th th there should be uh, an important um, decision, political decision about integration at the political level, but also at the management level in the, in the hospital, in the district. Then this, the, the structures and resources supportive of integration, this is like the hardware of, the, um, <coughs> o o of integration. Uh, and I think this is key, I mean, location, I mean, co-location might be important, but also, for example, for mental health, there should be a location that is appropriate to deal uh, with these kind of patients where you can, um, you can deal separately with, with patients that they are in, in a nice uh, and appropriate environment. Train uh, and, uh, health workers with uh, appropriate incentives and clear roles. An important um, uh, issue is communication, formal informal communications and collaboration, and this again is finding most in, a quali in, the, in, the, in the qualitative results of the, of the papers we found there's a lot about the importance of communication and, and part of the findings uh, is the lack of communication. And then patient centeredness. I mean, this is the most obvious one. And uh, although I think for anyone, if anyone has been a patient and understand the importance of this, uh, we are not just HIV patients or, 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 or hypertensive patients, but I think we work in that way. I mean, as researchers, as uh, uh, NGOs, and I think we need to keep that in mind all the time. It's easy to say, but it's, it's not so difficult, um, not, not so easy to, to implement. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is the work of uh, a group of people. 